Very good morning to you everybody. I'm out here today at Hackpen Hill in Wiltshire and today is the 8th of January and this morning we're going to listen to the ISS as it flies over and Tim Peake has a conversation with Sandringham School. Now I want to show you that with nothing else than a handheld radio we can listen in on the conversation. We're only going to listen to one side of the conversation and probably we're not going to be able to listen to all of it. But I want to show you that with some limited equipment, you no know, fancy antennas or uh, radios, that we can actually listen to the International Space Station. So I'm getting myself set up here this morning. I'm using a lapel mic because it's very windy. And uh, I'm just going to go through some technicalities of the radio to make sure that we're, uh, we're suitably prepared and ready for this is that we have our squelch turned right down so we don't hear anything. So you're going to be hearing a lot of that. Finally, when we're actually trying to track the ISS, we want to make sure that it's not, we're not pointing the radio straight at it. We want to be using it sideways on. Remember, this antenna radiates sideways here, not at the end. So when we talk to it, it's going to be coming over the horizon and over there. Okay? Also, we're going to be doing a lot of this. Because the polarisation is not vertical, it's not uh, horizontal it's circular we're going to be doing a lot of this because uh, of, of the way it works uh, when it comes over so just over 10 minutes time now to go and uh, I'm getting myself ready it's a beautiful morning sun's coming up over there and uh, yeah let's get ready to go there we go Golf Bravo 1 I definitely heard that And now it's the fun game of trying to find the right polarisation. <laughs> well, I've definitely heard Golf Bravo 1. The special event station call sign, by the way, that Tim Peake is using is Golf Bravo 1 Sierra Sierra. Golf Bravo 1. I love the sound of static in the morning. Something definitely there, right? Oh, of course, that could be somebody local, couldn't it? Well, we heard that. I'll be honest with you, the trucks going past meant I couldn't hear all of it. If I wasn't videoing this, I'd be using headphones, trust me. It will get better. I'm assuming it will get better as he goes over. Well, that was quite clear, wasn't it? So 
we're only listening to one side of the conversation at the moment, and that is because... So he's talking about Isaac Newton there. Because of the way satellites work, they use two frequencies. They use an uplink and a downlink. And they're across two bands. And we use 70 centimetres and two metres. Now, the downlink from the ISS is on two metres. The uplink is on 70 centimetres. So that's why we're only listening to one half of the conversation. Yes, you're absolutely right. The uh, liquid, um, the intermolecular forces in a liquid, the cohesion is stronger than the adhesion. Talk about liquids and uh, how they perform in uh, space. I feel it well, the EML uses uh, a coil, if you like, alloys. As soon as that is switched off, the metal alloys cool very rapidly. They're only about 8 millimeters in diameter, so they cool rapidly, but we can make the cool even faster. So that's our 10 minutes up and uh, and I hope that uh, that's been of uh, use to you. Uh, that's the ISS pass over and done with today. Certainly. It just goes to show that with a very cheap receiver, uh, just something that can do two meters or 144 to 146 megahertz, uh, even some airband shortwave receivers will be able to, uh, um, be able to listen to the ISS. And, and that's exactly what I've done today. I've listened to Tim Peake out here in glorious Wiltshire in the ruddy freezing. And uh, I hope this video has been of use to you. So until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.